Order. Uh, <clears throat> Madam, Madam Speaker, I'm going to let Mr. Jeffries from New York uh, explain what the bill does. Uh, this is something that I want to thank the gentleman from New York for bringing to our attention. Uh, this is the kind of a thing we've done in the past under certain situations and emergencies such as this. And um, I will uh, reserve the balance of my time because I have the right to close. I'll yield after this. We have no further speakers. And I'd just simply like to thank the gentleman for bringing it to our attention. And for the purposes of explaining the bill, I think Mr. Jeffries can, can explain it very well. And with that, I, I yield. The gentleman from Wisconsin reserves and the gentleman from New York is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Uh, let me first just thank Chairman Ryan for his leadership and his support uh, in bringing this important legislation, the Slain Officer Family Support Act of 2015 to the floor of the House of Representatives. Uh, let me also thank my good friend, the lead Republican co-sponsor, Representative Peter King, for his partnership on this bill, which is of great importance to the people of New York, uh, as well as law enforcement throughout the entire nation. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege for me to represent the 8th Congressional District in New York City, proud home uh, of the New York Police Department one of the finest in the world. On December 20th of 2014, unspeakable tragedy struck the Bedford-Stuyvesant community that I represent. While sitting in their marked patrol car, detectives Wen Jane Liu and Rafael Ramos were approached from behind and without warning, assassinated at point-blank range through the passenger side window. Lou and Ramos, both Brooklyn residents, had been assigned to patrol the Tompkins Public Housing Development in Bedford-Stuyvesant as part of a critical response detail responding to an increase in violence over the previous year. They volunteered to be there as part of their willingness to protect and serve the people of New York City. And they were killed simply for wearing that blue uniform. Detective Lou, age 32, who moved to Brooklyn's Gravesend section earlier that year, was the only son of Chinese American immigrants who came to the United States with his family at the age of 12. He is survived by his parents and his new wife, who he just married a month prior to that fateful day. Committed to his adopted New York City, Mr. Liu was inspired to become a police officer after witnessing the attacks on September 11th. After studying at both Kingsborough Community College and the College of Staten Island, he joined the Auxiliary Police in 2006 and in 2007 graduated from the Police Academy. Detective Liu served as a New York Police Department officer for seven years. Detective Ramos was a two-year veteran of the NYPD who had recently celebrated his 40th birthday. He was a lifelong Brooklyn resident. He was committed to his community and active in his church in Glendale, Queens. Rafael Ramos first served as a school safety agent before realizing his long-time dream of becoming a police officer in January of 2012. He then decided that he also wanted to become a police chaplain and spent 10 weeks studying to get his certification. And his chaplain class was scheduled to graduate at 4 p.m. on the day he was killed. Detective Ramos had intended on going into full-time ministry after retiring from the New York Police Department. He is survived by his wife and two sons, Jaden, 13, and Justin, a college student, age 19. Throughout New York and across this nation, there was an outpouring of love and support for the fate of these two men and the families that they left behind. Under current law, individuals contributing to organizations 
that provide financial support to the families of the slain detectives were required to make their contributions by December 31st of last year in order to qualify for a tax deduction in connection with a 2015 filing. Those officers were assassinated on December 20th. This bill extends the date of eligibility. Upon enactment, charitable contributions made by this year's April 15th tax deadline would be deductible immediately. The Joint Committee on Taxation has scored the bill as having a negligible budgetary impact of $500,000 or less under 10 years, over 10 years. It is similar, as Chairman Ryan pointed out, to legislation this Congress passed in 2014 and in 2010 in the wake of natural disasters in the Philippines and in Haiti. The assassinations of Detective Ramos and Detective Liu were a national tragedy that shocked the conscience of America and shook New York City to its core. In the aftermath, we cannot forget the families left behind when these two brave heroes were killed tragically in the line of duty. As part of that effort, this legislation will take a significant step in that direction. Let me again thank Chairman Ryan and Representative King, as well as the other co-sponsors of the bill for their support in bringing this legislation to the floor. And for these reasons, I respectfully urge my colleagues in the House to support H.R. 1527, and I yield back the balance of my time.